Hello. Okay, as mentioned, I just posted like a real quick five minute video earlier because I mentioned I'm getting uh, new decks and they're here and I just have to use them. Uh, now that I'm back to being the brightest blonde baby on the block, it's a whole lot of alliteration. So the Rebel deck, right? I'm a little perplexed because it has messages on both sides. Uh, so I don't really know how that works, but we'll read it. We'll read them when they come out. It doesn't come with an interpretation guide because they're so direct. I love that. I think it's hilarious. The Luna edition. Look. Ugh. Ugh. It's so pretty. And then this. This is a very common Oracle deck. A lot of people use the Kyle Gray. I mean, all of the Kyle Gray decks are really beautiful. This one's called Keepers of the Light. And I've wanted it for a while. It's got a lot of angelic energy in it. Um, and I tend to be talking about the angels more and more. So I wanted to have it. And then, oh, I got a tiny Howlite chunk as well. Howlite is really good for decreasing like anger and moving into calm spaces, helping you focus on learning and memory. And then it also promotes like sleep. It's really good for all chakras, um, but I needed one. I have a couple pieces of Howlite, but this one's shaped like a heart and it's a good pocket stone. Uh, so. Let's get into it. This is going to be a short reading. This is a pre-full moon reading. I'm going to be asking uh, what the full moon is going to be bringing into people's lives and for what reasons. So, uh, well, how do we, yeah, let's think about that. Collectively, <clears throat> The full moon is a great chance to like do what we said we were gonna do before the holidays. Um, that means different things for different people, but there are like lingering items that could use a last like clear out, clean out, turn off, unpack, let go of certain things. Um, so first card out, I'm gonna get, what is the biggest like sticking point right now? What's the biggest sticking point? Four people in embracing um, 2024, moving on, stopping everything it is that we need to stop doing. Um, let's get that first. What's the biggest sticking point leading up to this full moon? Okay. Three cards came out. Ah! I love them. These aren't really any of the reimagined ones. Oh, that's not true. They recolorized this one to include a woman with a different skin tone. But you see, the other ones are gold. These ones are like holographic, so... I mean, it's ironic because I'm using the not gold ones when I got my gold nails, but the gold nails will be here for a minute. So, seven of wands, ace of swords, three of cups. This is the biggest sticking point, okay? Now I'm going to get a clarifier for that from this little no bullshit deck. What's it called again? The rebel deck. <laughs> Thank you for nobody to, um, thank you to everybody for not unfollowing me for my microdose video. I didn't know if that would turn people off, but I just assumed that most people didn't watch it. Um, clarifier for the sticking point with the Ace of, so the hard thing with a deck that has two sides is that I can't tell when cards flip. I mean, you can, cause there's two different sides, but what is it? Please show me. Okay, we'll take this one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it says, stop sleeping so damn much. Wake up. You're missing some cool shit. Okay. Okay. So, what I'm thinking is that our... I think that what's coming into my mind is how the Seven of Cups came in one of my short readings recently. And that energy was about overwhelm and uh, feeling confused amidst stuff that's shifting right now. And so what I'm getting is that our, our forward motion and our efforts, our, our truth, our clarity, Ace of Swords energy, like our communication, outgoing and incoming, it's not necessarily, oh my God, it's so weird that they're so like sturdy and fresh and clean. My other ones are all soft and 
Ah, I'm not used to it. Um, it. Okay, one more from the bottom of the deck to clarify. This is what I just heard. Wow, it's the Hierophant. It's the Hierophant. Okay, so what's going on here is that we might be in some type of very, very close to our main vein of our highest timeline or whatever you want to call it. You know, the new start, the stuff that you're trying to work on, bring into your life. It's like uh, when you look at veins in a leaf, you can look at the main one and then those ones that split off, but you can really study and see that there's tiny little ones that, that kind of split off. So it's like we're in some itty bitty little side shoot, off shoot from our main thing. I think a lot of people, most people who resonate with me, my messages and relate to the things I say, um, or I found this channel, have done the work that they need to, to basically, you know, successfully do some kind of quantum leap into a new um, trajectory, a higher one than you were aiming at the start of last year. And it's not like this is a bad thing and we're like going um, a different way and it's not gonna, you know, we're, it's not like we're deviating from that. It's like I said before, there's one last little circuit of clear out and that will be taken care of by this full moon. But the sticking point has to do with contractually with the universe. Our karmic contracts, those happen between us and our patterns and our activities, our karmic contracts, but also with other people. I'm sort of feeling like this offshoot is asking us to remember like from God's eyes, from the universe's eyes, from the eyes of the angels when they look down on you, there would be no reason why what you want isn't what they want for you, unless somehow it's not in the highest good of all beings. Ziz interests. <laughs> the universe has nothing but support, resources, people, abundance to send your way when your dreams are aligned with that of the highest good of the collective. So we can't really be like totally focusing on you. I'd like to, but um, I think that I think that in in general terms, that's kind of what this little loop around is for the collective taking another look at what it is that we're doing and what little maybe like side trim, the ruffly edge, the tassel of the main dream is maybe, maybe that means, um, you know, moving forward, even if you do so like alone, or maybe it means reaching out to new people or maybe it has to do with a new idea that somebody, you know, will reveal to you but it's all for this higher contractual understanding that's that's aligned and it's going to make sense i want to receive a little bit more on that i'm not going to ask a question i'm just going to let a card come out because i want to keep talking in the same way about the same stuff there it is mm. yeah Here's our infinity, mother of patience, temperance, balance. Constant state of departure while always arriving, understanding that you can expand your world, your uh, abilities, your knowledge, your skill sets. You can expand everything and you can still be in some type of peace with everything you've cultivated thus far, the things that you've had the courage to release and move away from. Hmm. What's the biggest uh, hidden energy that we're not focusing on, but would do well to? Hidden energy. Hidden energy that we would do well to focus on. Nine of Wands. Well, I didn't want to see that. Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so the Six of Wands jumped out right after this, so I'm going to... So if the hidden energy that not like hidden energy, like we don't even need to know, like the moon card because it's hidden. Uh, hidden energy that would benefit us to look at is the nine of wands, but the six of wands came out right after it. So I think it has to do with 
embracing and understanding that there is stubbornness that's been holding us back from our own success. Stubbornness is kind of a loaded word. So instead of stubbornness, see it as, hmm, it's like it calls into necessity, the, the need to like, <laughs> I'm all jumbled. I mean, I'm not in my space and I got my new cards and you're supposed to get to know your decks before you do readings with them. But um, it's like unlearning energy. It's like there's a little itty bitty bit of stuff that needs to be unlearned or there's some type of thing that we didn't expect that we would surrender as like a I don't know, maybe we were just misinformed even about something or about how something has to go or about the way that something is. It's not maybe our personal rigidity to latching onto old belief systems or impressions or things. Could be for whatever reason. So it's asking us to take a sweep through our belief system. But what I'm seeing is, um, again, with like veins, these these main veins splitting into mini ones, it's going to be something that's a little bit smaller, but it's still preventing us from the success. And if we're busy trying to move things along, like the, the rough draft, the way that it was written, then we're not going to be able to make those like edits, if you will, for this. Clarify that by splitting the deck. Eight of cups. Okay. What's under it? The page of pentacles. Yeah. There's a passiveness here that's like, It's about soul searching and it's it's considered, I don't wanna, seven of pentacles. Yeah, it's considered because the page of pentacles, the seven of pentacles, the work that's been put, put in for the last six months and all of the like really major stuff that has fallen away naturally. So there's the stuff that we've changed and there's the stuff that started to fall away naturally. Um, what's interesting, I don't speak, I don't speak to people who, well, I don't believe that the people who are watching my videos are in this part of the collective, but there are some big tower energies, I think, happening in the collective for a lot of people. Um, and when other people, even if it's not our tower, when other people's towers fall, some of the debris can, you know, hit us a little bit in the wings if we're close to that person in some way. And so there's different collective energies around stability um, and the shifting of different kinds of relationships. But keeping kind of like the bird's eye aerial view as far as these are the major arcanas that we got, it's about realigning the contractual understanding that your soul is actually after. You know, your soul is actually after. Like an example for me is... Um, Oh, thinking about visualizing a business that I was going to run, um, that I'd like to run, but the way that I visualized it when I was like 18 is very different than the way that I visualize it now. Um, and I had to decide, <laughs> not because like I had to give up things that I wanted to pursue within it, but my interests have changed. The way that I see the potential for my impact has changed. It's 1333. And the things that resonate with me have changed. And sometimes what happens is that we don't let those changes for whatever reason. We don't know why we change when we change, but we change. That's for sure. We change over time. And we have to let those changes influence our goals a little bit and like why it is we're doing what we're doing. So I'm going to use one of these guys now. This is the Keepers of the Light. I'm going to read the message from it. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. And then I'll do a shorter reading again on um, Friday, probably. That one will probably be a touch longer, but it has, must, has to be under an hour still. shuffle this out. I just want to pull one after I cut the deck. Oh, by the way, I didn't really touch on this, but it's talking about sleep. Um, so this is a thing, right? Everybody's very exhausted almost all the time. I think it's just like part of living in this crazy world. Um, but as we know, 
There's a lot of things that people do that drain your energy. Um, one of them is sleeping too much. If you're tired and you always feel like sleeping, then you're never going to do any energy giving activities and stuff. And it's that time of year where it's a little sluggish post holiday, but, but in particular, I have felt, I haven't felt this way since high school. Um, it's like, I can't get up in the morning. <laughs> I do not want to leave my bed. It's cold. I'm not nearly done sleeping. Like it can't possibly be time. It is. No, it is. It's time to get up. There's this sluggishness. Um, so I'm just getting some information about that because this card says stop sleeping so damn much. Wake up. You are missing some cool shit. So there's like a metaphorical thing to that too, where I think that with what I talked about earlier, we could be sleeping through some of these details that might be changing or percolating. It's like little things that you don't know you're going to have to change or address or think about until you get a little bit further into the journey. So anticipate just a couple little things coming up to be acknowledged so that we can continue kind of sweeping this destined plan into the right avenue, which again is committing to like that higher path that doesn't have any of the density attached to it. Um, yeah, I mean, sleeping through the day could be sleeping through your own life if you're not like really aware of what it is that, um, you know, you're doing and your, your impact and why you're doing these things. <laughs> See what we have. I love this. <laughs> Because there, I, I'm somewhat familiar with all the different cards in this deck, and we could have gotten any any one of them, and we got this one. It's Auras, Cosmic Gateway. Your thoughts are magnetic and powerful. Miraculous changes are occurring. I'm going to read from it. I'm going to read from it. Are they alphabetical? Yeah. Um, he came up recently. For me, personally, so I'm trying to think about why but it's not collective so let's just keep going all right or says the egyptian eagle-headed god and son or twin flame of the goddess isis he is known for his foresight psychic awareness and ability to travel between worlds he can help us move into the cosmos with our mind meditations and prayers so that we can harness the natural magic that surrounds us he was known for ritual magic in the past and now he helps create pockets of energy in the world where we can access light wisdom and insight if you are seeing the symbol of an eye appearing around you, know that Oris is asking you to become aware of how you are influencing the energy around you and how it in turn is influencing you. You are connected to the universe and have the ability to manifest miraculous experiences. Your thoughts, words, and actions are like magnets, drawing the energy that creates and cultivates your world. You have a stellar gateway chakra above your head, a vortex of energy that is influenced by your own energy. You can place ideas into this vortex to create what you are seeking. The universe also offers you guidance, abundance, support, and healing based on your capacity to connect to it and accept it. You have a real opportunity to further that connection now by sending prayers and intentions out to the cosmos. Yeah. So, um, Stargate Chakra is like 10 to 12 inches above the head. And um, like, can you? Thank you. I like that because that ties in, it kind of wraps this up perfectly by saying a lot of the things, if you, if you sleep through life, which is easy to do, a lot of people are asleep on earth, they sleep through their lives, they sleep, they sleep under the spell, you know, like I just see like all of the entertainment industry and everything that's happening in the world is like a weird little pan flute guy. If we just kind of took him out, then everybody would kind of be like, why am I doing any of this? Um, but right, the sleeping spell, all this influence and all this stuff that's really um, has a stronghold on people, keeps them from doing things like connecting, tapping in, being able to receive divinely inspired ideas and connect with their higher self or guide, guides and guidance if they're interested in doing that. And so it seems like we are... Allowing for whatever comes through that connection, or it's likely that whatever comes through that connection is going to be the thing that helps us with the revision. So there's something to be gained from letting, like, for example, I was saying, uh, you know, there might be a need to, with this card resembling, like, having to fight, but also, you know, just persevering, even if it's not in a, in a fighting way, it can be just the, the necessary way, the way that we do <laughs> every day, just to continue continue, carry on, not go insane. Um, hmm. 
it's as if It's as if, okay, what I'm hearing is that we will not be able to attain this highest timeline, your highest timeline, the one that is like contractually of your soul that you came here to live out as a human when you came to earth. And the one that if you choose to follow, your life will start to shift because you'll start to have miraculous things coming into you because the universe, everybody, you know, you're never in a vacuum, you are seen. You are watched, you you know, you are, and that's, for me, as somebody who's always been kind of like paranoid about surveillance, yeah, that's true too, you know, we're watched, you are, by all of the, you know, or heard at least, and, um, well, very watched as well, but whatever, by the devices and <laughs> whatever else, but um, you don't have to tell anybody or declare anything when you energetically Continue to try to migrate what it is that you're doing into a space where you're summoning all the elements needed through your energy. I mean, guided action each and every day, but it's like, you don't have to do great big grand gestures because the universe provides the unknown, right? There's, it's, a, it's a cause and effect. So it leaves us in a position of not knowing exactly how or when certain things are going to come to us, but we understand our human ability, our human role, <laughs> within like the co-creative dance to be continuing to hold the intention and then making sure that like our human ego and our own, you know, karma and our own abilities to get triggered isn't taking us away from, from that path. You'll start to see manifested in your world, different things that are showing you that you've gotten a little bit off that path in the form of little issues and stuff, you know? So beautiful one more bullshit card just because i feel like it and i don't even know what any of them say oh no it says they broke your heart fuck them yeah well these things happen i'm really sorry if you've gone through a breakup recently or or whatever happened <laughs> here's the thing guys we can be kind with the people who have, you don't have to. I mean, I genuinely don't know your situation or anybody's, right? But um, I tend to be like, I mean, I think pretty understanding. But um, to overshare, to not overshare, I'll overshare just a little bit, just a little bit today. I went through a breakup, but then like after that, I've never had so many people actively trying to date me in one summer as I did this past summer ever in my life. It was like overwhelming. Um, and I couldn't have been less interested in anybody. Not to mention, I just, I, I, like I've never been personally with the whole boundaries thing, armadillo spirit, setting healthy boundaries. It's really taught me a lot because I'm always very like, I think pretty, you, you, you start somewhere and then you keep heightening that boundary or reinforcing that boundary if people don't understand or if people don't listen. And um, yeah, I mean, I got to a point where I was like, I will be filing a, a PFA. <laughs> you don't want to get to that point, um, but you know, do what you have to do. It's not that I don't feel safe, but when I don't want for people to, you know, if, if somebody is not receiving a message um, then you reserve the right to do what it is that you have to do to send that message. So lasting thought, um, heartbreak is never fun, but when hearts break open, they feel things and they only become bigger and more capable of holding more. Actually, that's not true. A lot of people just become closed off and hardened, but I'm telling you how I go about mine, <laughs> my heartbreak. What's a lasting thought for that? Because now I feel like we just started a whole new reading. I just can't do short readings. It's like, it's like I don't want to hang up the phone or something. It's the Ten of Cups. We have a lesbian couple on it. Look at that. Diversity. It's, it's really nice that they reimagine this, but it's the Ten of Cups. Yeah. 
Always remember, always remember that the things that don't work out are breaking down so that something better can come into your life. Okay, bye.